Now this is a frequency table. Um, you've had to construct some of these in the previous exercise. You may have had to have had like an extra column for tallying and then you count them all up by the end and this is what you'll result with, okay? Now frequently, in fact, one of the actual questions on this is on the basis of your frequency table, on the basis of those guys over there, need an extra line, can you add on columns for cumulative frequency and relative frequency, right? So how are we gonna calculate these things? Now there's actually an order to this, so I'll leave this up in a minute so you can draw your own one and so on, but I just want you to focus first. It makes more sense to work out cumulative frequency first rather than relative frequency. And as we go through it, I wonder if you can work out why. Cumulative frequency. Let me come back to our definition here, right, of cumulative frequency. It's the total up to and including each one of those points, okay? So now if I have a look here, candy clicks, some kind of lolly, I have no idea, okay? When I'm working out cumulative frequency, I'm just looking at this column over here for normal frequency and I'm adding it up as I go. So the first one will be one. The second one is gonna be one plus five, which is six. The next one's going to be six plus eight, which is 14 plus 13, which is 27, 34, 38, and, okay, good. So, I want you to look at these numbers. Now, I hope this sort of rings a bell in terms of its similarity with when we were constructing field diagrams. Do you remember that? We'd walk across the field and we'd be counting this, the trundle wheel as it ticked over, and you're gonna get these numbers that get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Now, how does that relate to these numbers over here? Well, those numbers on the left are the ones which is like the differences between those, okay? So all I've done to get the column on the right is to add up those differences, okay? Now, can anyone tell me why it makes sense to work out cumulative frequency before relative frequency, if you need to work out both? Maybe coming back to the definition for relative frequency might help. Over the whole yeah, very good. So if you have a look at the definition, right, to find relative frequency, you need the total population, right? It's something divided by something, and you don't know what the total population is till you've counted them up. So when I come here, I've worked out that the total is 40. So now this is as simple as it gets. I'm going to write each one as a fraction. 36 candy clicks. It happens once out of 40. That's it. I could write that. That's 2.5%. They might ask you for a percentage, it doesn't matter too much. Um, this is gonna be five out of 40, which I can simplify. This will be eight out of 40, which I can also simplify. Um, 13 out of 40, can I simplify that one? Nope, 13 is prime, so I'm stuck. Seven out of 40, can I simplify? No. Uh, four out of 40, two, one on 10. And then lastly, two out of 40, which is? Okay, and I'm done. I've got all of my things here. Now you can see I've got some questions down here. I'll only answer um, just one of them really. If I said how many packets contained 40 or fewer, right? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the cumulative frequency and saying, well, where's 40? And where is all of the ones including that 40 or fewer? So here's 40, 34. That 34 includes all of these numbers. Does that make sense? So my simple answer to how many packets contain 40 or fewer, the answer is 34. 34 of them contain 36 or 37 or 38. That's what the adding did for me, okay? 